In this video we're going to look at a small number of FastQ screen reports and try and interpret what they mean. The first sample we're going to look at is a mouse sample and we've screened the reads which have come off our sequencer against human, mouse, E. coli, Phi-X, adapter sequences and commonly used cloning vectors. The graph shows the proportion of the reads which mapped against which data set. And as you can see quite clearly, the results do seem to show that this is a mouse sample. Nearly 100% of the reads mapped against the mouse genome. However, a small number of reads mapped against the human genome. Does this mean there is contamination? Well, let's just look in a little bit more detail at the graph. You can see that there are four different types of colour on the graph. There is light blue and this represents reads which map uniquely to the specified genome and didn't map to any other genome. Dark blue represents reads which map to a specified genome but did not map uniquely, i.e. they map to two or more separate locations. Light red represents reads which, although they map uniquely to a specified genome, they also map to one or more other of the genomes. Dark red represents reads which multi-map to the genome specified and also map to one or more other genome. What you can see is that the vast majority of reads which map to the mouse genome mapped uniquely to that genome and didn't map to any of the others. However, there is a small proportion of reads, i.e. the red ones, which map to the mouse genome and one other i.e. they map to the human genome. But what is important is that no reads mapped uniquely to the human genome. So what I think we should conclude from this is that we are indeed looking at a mouse sample, the majority of reads map uniquely to the mouse sample, and there are a few mouse-derived reads which also map to the human genome. Next, we want to look at a human sample. The majority of reads map to the human genome, and a small proportion of the reads map to both the human genome and the mouse genome. However, there is a significant number of reads which map uniquely to the mouse genome and do not map anywhere else. And this suggests that these reads are indeed derived from the mouse genome. This suggests there is contamination in the sample and you may want to go back and repeat the experiment or try and troubleshoot it to find out what went wrong. You can also see in the fourth column there are a small number of reads which mapped only to the Phi-X genome. This could be contamination, however it is quite common when performing a sequencing experiment to add a small quantity of Phi-X. This actually in some instances improves the base calling of the sequencing machine and I suspect that is what has happened in this case. In our final example we see quite a different picture. Here we have reads which multi-map to multiple locations in the human, mouse and vector reference genomes. These reads also map to more than one genome. This is quite common when we see low complexity reads, for example poly A's or poly T's, which are found repeated in many genomes. This suggests that something has gone wrong during the library creation and you may need to go back and troubleshoot your experiment to find out why you've not amplified what you thought you'd amplified. That is by no means an exhaustive list of examples of all the artifacts and problems that we've seen during our time analysing sequencing results, but these are common examples and they should help you think about the issues you need to consider when interpreting these FASTQ screen QC results. I would welcome any comments on FastQ Screen, whether that concerns how to install and run it, or if you're having trouble interpreting the results, or of course if you have any recommendations on how to improve the software and give it better functionality. Please feel free to contact me by email. Thank you. Goodbye.